Hello guys and welcome back to the greatest build channel with a patrol and a Land Cruiser on the Sunshine Coast on YouTube. Uh, it might be the only one, I'm not sure. That is right, we're back with another Build Not Bought 80 episode. Now this car has a bit of a history on this channel and if you're new here, I encourage you to go back and have a look. We bought this car fully stock grandpa spec and did a stock to tourer in 24 hour build on it, did a few trips in it and now we've gone full horn doing the full built not bought treatment on this truck. Now, I'm actually gonna put a link down below. If you haven't seen any of the other episodes, I encourage you to go back and watch them. Um, there's a link to the playlist where you can see the whole range of the Built Not Bought 80 videos on this particular car. What are we doing today, you might be asking now. Dyno Tune, obviously you've seen the thumbnail, we'll be doing that in the episode, but that is tomorrow, so I've got an extra day. What are we gonna do? We remember last episode, I started working on all the interior with the electrical side of things to get the car running. So I thought I'd continue with that and start doing the dual battery system. So that's pretty much what we got here. Um, you saw last time we are gonna be running a lithium battery. So this is the Red Arcs 100 amp hour deep cycle lithium battery, a great unit. So we'll be pairing that with their Manager 30 now. Obviously, if you guys are come with the Red Art gear, they have their uh, Red Vision system. Now, I didn't need that for this build because it's a bit of an overkill, but you may not know you can actually still use their Red Vision screen. Red Vision? Red Vision screen um, with the Manager 30 via the CAN bus. It just hooks up, so that's pretty cool. You can still have that um, diagnostics where you can see your current charge voltage, everything going in and out but obviously you're not having with the programmable switching that you get on the Red Vision. So we've basically got the Manager 30 put in today. We're gonna to have a thousand watt inverter, which we won't get onto today because I'm actually mounting that near the back here. So let's dive in, let's chat more talk. That's the same thing. Let's talk more work. <laughs> yeah, that. Okay, so the plan for the electrical system now, we've obviously already done a little bit of this. So the start battery is gonna be in here. Now I've actually put on the front side of this panel two fuse boxes. So one will be for the battery, which runs a lot of your ECU and your engine stuff. And then this one here will be for the auxiliary battery, which will run on my accessories, lighting, UHF, lock, oh, not lockers. That'll be on this one. All that sort of stuff on this side. So we are very limited in here for space, obviously, but we're gonna have the auxiliary battery in here. And then I'm thinking the Manager 30 will kind of just be bolted to the front of this panel here. Now I've got a couple of relays there, I think they're for the lockers. But I also need to fit in here the airbag systems. Um, so there's a compressor, um, then we've got a couple of control boxes and it's like a little distribution block for the air system. I don't know. Anyway, that's all got to be put in here as well. Um, on the red, red arc stuff, you obviously got this little earth bar which senses your current and voltage to that auxiliary battery to give you all the information that you need. So the best thing I ever did was do this timber thing so I could just mm, text through stuff all to it. So let's get all the hardware installed, get all this stuff mounted, and then start working out where the wires need to be run. Oh, like a glove. You think it's bloody designed for it. Okay guys, sorry, it's a little bit tricky to film this sort of stuff inside the car, in the dark, it doesn't look amazing, I know. But we've got everything mounted. Um, so there's that air compressor that I was talking about, distribution block, the ECU for the airbag system. Manager 30's in, second battery's gonna be here with the um, sensor for the voltage and current flow. Main start battery, things are looking good. So why have I gone the Manager 30? Now it's kind of an all-in-one electrical system control unit. I mean, it not only acts as a dual battery system and protects your starting battery, it also uses that charge to charge your secondary battery and it sets the profile for the type of battery it is, whether it's a lead acid um, or like a lithium battery like this one, it needs a slightly different charge profile. It also does solar as well, so if you do have an external solar panel or something on the roof, you can take that input too. And then it obviously has all the outputs to put onto your loads um, for all your accessories, compressors, lights, stuff like that that and also the uh, monitoring as well so I know how much voltage currents coming out even when I'm using the inverter 
Um, there's a plug for that as well, so it can trigger the inverter remotely. Um, so I can show you that too, but yeah, pretty much does everything in one. So I think I'm just gonna run a time lapse now because the frustration is real trying to film in this small dark area. We'll just throw a couple of GoPros up and do all the wiring and then I'll show you how it all looks when we finish. <laughs> Oh, so I just got back from the dentist. If I sound like a bit of a spastic, I'm a bit, a bit numb. Oh gosh, that's really numb. See? Oh, I reckon I could pierce my lip even. That's probably not a good there. Anyway, we're smashing through this electrical system. Um, we've got both the batteries in and we've got Mandra 30 all hooked up. Bunch of the wiring done for fridge, for solar, for rear lights. Um, the airbag man compressors in now. I'm probably gonna actually get the airbag man boys in because they're a good laugh and we'll actually set up all that distribution block and get it all. But the electrical side is done like the power and relay sort of for the compressor. Um, I'm kind of smashing through this quickly actually. Oh, it's really hard when I'm kind of filming this stuff. I don't know whether to put more detail in or punch through it fast. I mean, comment down below whether you want to do it in a bit more detail or you either want me to smash it through and keep it more entertaining. It's really hard. I try and keep it moving so you guys are entertained, but then other people are like, oh, slow down. I want you to learn a thing or two. So let me know in the comments below. It's really hard to find that balance. Anyway, what are we gonna do now? Oh, I know what we're gonna do. I know what we're gonna do. So I just made a catastrophic discovery and that is Land Cruisers are all wheel drive, okay? We put the two wheel drive kit in, but flashback, I did the hubs, but didn't do the center piece in the transfer case. On the front here, we've got um, that locking hub, so you can actually put it into two wheel drive. Now, in the kit as well, there was a center bearing you need to change too. Not sure where that goes yet. I'm pretty sure it looks like it's something that happens in the transfer case to so basically disconnect the drive to that front drive shaft. So we'll get that in as well. But the problem is tomorrow morning and approximately less than 24 hours when it goes on the dyno we're talking rear wheel drive only it's a hub dyno i got to get this thing in rear wheel drive i was like i'll just take the front drive shaft out nope the center diff spins all the power to the front okay center lock no we can't do the center lock because that whole harness is completely ripped out of the car i don't know where the wire is for that so i can't put that in so we're gonna have to do a bit of a rush job pull this transfer case apart and put that center bearing in that i was meant to do ages ago this this bit this guy, the good thing is I did buy it with the bearing already pressed on. So I'll show you what goes on inside, but you basically just change the section off where the center diff is. But whew, last minute dramas as usual. And then we'll be in two wheel drive action. And I can keep my Bluetooth dry shaft the way it is. God, I wish this lip would sort itself out. I sound weird, I feel weird. Alrighty, we've got it apart and I thought I'd try and show you guys how these things are converted from four wheel drive to two wheel drive. So you know how a diff works in the back of your car and it's just like a, got spider gears and that? Center diff does essentially the exact same thing. So you should be able to pull this gear off here Whoop, with one hand, hold on. You'll be able to see inside there, spider gears. So it's literally like a diff center. I'm gonna turf that, yeet it in the bin put that solid um, piece on and that'll stop the gears trying to turn the thing and it will lock it up into two wheel drive only. And then to actually go into four wheel drive, that's when you use the center lock in the transfer case and do it that way. So pretty simple, that in combination with your hub locks on the diff means that the whole front system independently switches off when you're in two wheel drive. So get this thing back together and then we're back where we started and should be good for the dyno tomorrow. What's going on guys? All right, it is time to announce the winner from last episode where we were choosing someone to come in for a ride in the Built Not Bought 80. So later in the year when I go around to the shows, um, I'll be in your state, hopefully, you can come down and go for a hot lap. Sorry, I'm at home now, the computer's here, but this is what we've done. So every entry online, obviously, no matter how much you spent is the amount of entries. So here we've got a ton of names. Um, I think there was about 5,000 5,687 entries. So what I've done 
is created a formula here. So we've got a random index selector from 5,000. When I hit enter, it should pick a random name, which will be the winner of this competition. Here we go. Boom. Christopher Howell. Hobble. Sorry if I said your name wrong, but Christopher, if you're watching this, mate, send me a message. Otherwise, I will contact you. I obviously got your address and everything. Um, oh, I need to find out what state he's in. Let me quickly do that. Alrighty, so I just found Christopher's order online here, and it looks like he is from South Australia, which is good news. I'm going to the Adelaide Four Wheel Drive Show later in the year. So, uh, Christopher, look forward to meeting you down there in Adelaide. Um, we'll be running the show you did event. The 80 will be there, and the patrol, hopefully, actually. So, you could probably choose which one you want to go for riding, or we could just do both. Anyway, back to the episode. Congratulations, Christopher. We'll see you then. The rest of you is, let's get going on this 80. Alrighty, the transfer case is finally sorted. You want to know how long it took me? My face isn't numb anymore. That's how long it took me. Anyway, the last thing we're going to do before we head to the dyno, if you can't see already, it's bloody dark outside, so I'm running out of time very quickly. The last thing we want to do is obviously change the oil. We did a final dump of the run-in oil. Obviously, you get all that crap, you get all that build-up of um, like bits and pieces from the motor. You've got your assembly lube in there. There's a big mix of just crap from when you built the motor. You want to just flush that out after it's done a couple of runs. So I've done that, I've drained it, put some good stuff in. Now I'm actually going one step further this time. I'm going to be using Nulon's race oil. Now why am I using race oil? Because it's a race car, of course. No, look, even if it isn't a race car, it is basically the best quality oil that Nulon make. Um, and it's a 540 if you think back to when I told you about those oils. Obviously, five is sort of its cold weight. Now, that's nice and thin when you first start up that engine so you don't create a whole lot of wear. And when it gets up to temperature, it's a 40. So it's pretty much where I use most of my oils, like a 2040 or a 1540. So that's really good for this. It's a full synthetic as well. So hopefully this will be exactly what we need for that tune tomorrow when we hit the dyno. So we'll get this stuff in here, hook her up on the trailer, and then we're going to make some boost. Oh. All right, here we are. We're finally here at Dino Day today. Heading down to Cleveland Exhaust to see Scotty to get this thing tuned. Um, now I'm back in the cruiser, in the FTE. Obviously the patrol is still broken. Don't know what the hell is going on with that thing. Anyway, this is a good little tow rig actually, now that we've had it tuned. A video will be coming very soon of this thing getting dyno tuned. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, dyno, I'm hoping for five to 600 horsepower. 600 would be absolutely amazing. But anything over 500 horsepower, I'll be stoked with. So we'll see how we go today. Bit of running in to do, um, but we'll see what Scotty recommends. He, he's the man, he's got a lot of experience when it comes to this Haltech stuff. So can't wait to jump in, meet him, and see what he reckons. Oh, I got mud on it already. An official four wheel drive. Alrighty, so today we are down at Cleveland Exhaust. We're doing the tune finally, it's been rolled in. We are on a hub dyno today. Well, he's the man of the hour. We've got Scotty. Scotty will be tuning it today. Um, he's got a bit of experience with the Haltech stuff, which is really what I wanted because this has got the Haltech system. He actually done a couple of the Skid Factory cars as well, which is how uh, I got told about you. And you've got a YouTube channel, Nugget Garage. Yep. Check that out. I'll, I'll link it down below as well. Um, but look, new engine, fresh engine, a couple of run-ins, do some pulls. Um, but we should be able to kind of wind it up as much as we can today. I don't want to go stupid, like I said. I want to try and get that five to 600 horsepower. But who knows? I have no idea what it'll do. Um, and then we'll bring it down to a comfortable level. I don't want blowing pistons out halfway down the beach, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens, get the thing spun up, and um, yeah, just let Scott work his magic. Discovery, um, these hub adapters for the dyno are brand new. He hasn't really done a Land Cruiser <laughs> before, so. There's an issue with, oh, it's just that one's together. Anyway, there's a lip that locates the outer ring into the inner ring, and it's fouling on these little studs here. So we could either cut the studs, which would work for this car, but if he's gonna do cruises in the future, we need to fix the uh, actual front piece. So we're gonna just mill out the inside, use the lathe, get that sorted. But while we're down here, reminded me, this is the weak link, I think. In this drive line, things can go wrong. Obviously, we can blow diffs, drive shafts, unis, all sorts. But that axle is a worry for me. And I've already spoken to a couple of people um, to try and get a set of Dowd or splined axles because it is a weak link on these and get some chromoly axles as well. But hopefully they stay in today and don't spit out, make a mess. Then we'll be all up correct. So this is what we're talking about. We're gonna just bring this lip from the inside out and leave a little bit on the outside to locate so it holds the weight of the car, but it should clear the studs in theory. But I'm not gonna be anywhere near this thing. You can do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, look at that. Like a glove. Alrighty, we're getting close now. Just things pretty much on the dyno, getting everything hooked up. Um, so what is sort of the plan? What are we gonna run through first? Being a brand new car, fresh engine, fresh ECU. Well, I'm just gonna go through the um, <clears throat> ECU first and just make sure, you know, the target to fuel ratio, all the engine set up, everything that you've already pre-configured in there is how yep. I have it. Yep, um, pretty much all I've done is sensors, so just- Yeah, so that'll be like- I don't first. even know what map's in there. <laughs> So the next 20 minutes, I won't even run the engine, I'll just do yep. that. Yep. Then, then we'll do the base timing, we'll synchronize the timing on the engine so it matches what's in there. Yep. And then we'll just get into light load. That's usually when I run the motor in, if it's fresh. Yep, yep. You may as well do it while you're also configuring and programming the load part, or the cruise part of the map yep. in the light load. And then from there, we'll get an idea of, well, start sneaking it into the boost to see if it's going to add enough fuel. Yep. And then from there, we'll switch over to doing <laughs> Me just and... boosting it up the street. Yeah, it feels good. It's probably laying as <laughs> <laughs> I think from one of your videos, you had closed loop O2 turned on, didn't you? I don't even know what that is. I'm, no, pretty, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it was trying to correct itself. Yeah, O2's in. Itself. The only yeah. thing closed loop I remember is the, the throttle, because it wouldn't idle and turn the closed loop throttle on, so it'd set idle. But one thing I know, it's not starting easily. So something's going on there, whatever's triggering it. Just probably don't have the right injector data. Yeah, throw there, fuel so. in. Anyway, we'll let uh, Scotty work his magic for the next half hour or so. I'll come back to you when we're getting close to doing some pulls and stuff. But... So the thing's running, uh, we got it up on the dyno, the car's running, he's checked everything in the ECU. We're just gonna be setting the timing now, so you just do it old school with a timing light. You see an old timing light, eh? And you're just confirming it with the crank. So you wanna synchronize what the ECU is seeing with the physical timing on the crank using the markings, which were pretty much what we did with Al and Woody, but just double checking that. And then we can do a couple of load pulls and see what happens. Initial checks are sort of done. Um, gonna do a couple of light pulls now, throwing a little bit of boost in. Um, I already see a couple of numbers on the screen. We are well past the factory power for this car. I think they came out with 120 horsepower or something. So we've boosted past that within the first kind of, I don't know, 2000 RPM. So that, there was a little pull there, 10, 10 pound of boost-ish. Close to the 500 mark. So, now you're just going to be playing with the fueling and timing and winding boost up and fuel up and see what happens. Yeah, the closed loop O2 trim at the moment is pulling, you know, 4% I think it's the, I'll just keep going back and forth, back and forth, trimming yep. it out until it basically just pulls nothing. Yeah. Then we'll um, start finding the bottom of the boost control range and then we'll start winding some boost there. Beauty! Um, quietly we accidentally made some power whoops oh we've just we've just met the mark 566 we can go home now we're done he reckons it's not even halfway there like it's well more than halfway but 
that's like base run. It's just finding boost now. What do you reckon? How are you, how are you, how are you feeling? What are you thinking? It's a bit of a monster, I think, eh? <laughs> Underrated motor, isn't it? The old 1FZ. I don't have much timing in it. It doesn't seem that he... That guy's not, not stop knocking. Yeah. I think that got 17 pounds in the middle there and it fell away a little bit at the end. So yep. I can chase more in that, yeah. So one thing that, well, I'm aware of but wasn't really aware of, when you're talking boost numbers, if everyone's talking about, oh, 30, 40 pound on these big diesels and all that. Petrol car, big capacity like this, you gotta think about the volume of air. So what was it doing, like 16 pound or something? 16 ish, yeah. I mean, we could pump it up probably more, but like, that number, you put that volume of air through like a little two litre or something, it could be 30, 40 pounds. So you got to think about, I think I, I spoke to you about this with the supercharger as well. It's about how much air you're pushing through. It's a large motor, four and a half litre. So 16 pound in a four and a half litre volume capacity, that's a lot of air. So it's moving some boost, making some power. Um, I reckon we should see that crack that 600 today for sure. What are you doing now? What's I just, happening? I just want to check a plug and see. Uh, have a look at the old plug. See if I can get an idea of where we're at timing wise. But that old trick. So that's how you know you got a quality tuner, eh? They had to like to get their hands dirty. <laughs> None of this laptop tuner. Oh, no, nah, she looks good on the numbers. You got to actually have a look at what the engine's doing. Look at its behavior. How the plug looks, what kind of color. What sort of color are we looking for? Obviously brown is lean and black is rich. Uh, we don't know, these plugs were in there for a while. What do you mean a while? It's been driving for a day. <laughs> yeah, but there was sort of before. Yeah. yeah. Mm. We might have to close that plug gap up a little bit too. So I might pull all of them Yeah, out. I didn't know what plugs to put yeah. in. Someone said you can go a one colder. It's like a, I don't know what the numbers mean on, on a spark plug, but it, it is said a instead of, no, I I'd think probably, it's a seven. I'd probably like to put a seven in it. I've got some sevens if you want to put some sevens in it. Actually, that, yeah, that does remind me. Someone did recommend to put a seven in and all they had in stock were the sixes. So we could go seven is colder or something. Smaller gap, bigger oh. gap. Ah, uh, no, it's the heat range, so it's colder. Plug. It's colder, heat range, I don't know. This is all real technical stuff, but have you got other plugs? Yeah, I bought some this morning for you. Oh, he bought some for me. It's bloody Christmas. I predict. You give me 600 horsepower and a set of plugs. I predict oh, Can't complain. <laughs> that last run there, too much boost. Bloody blew the hose off. Zippy tar boy, what else is going to come off? <laughs> Holy smokes, I don't believe it. I think we saw 638, almost 640 horsepower. That is crazy. That is more than my bloody LS supercharged forged bottom end and big supercharger and V8 and all this noise, LS Patrol and the old cruiser, the old six cylinder, plenty more power than it. So I'm really excited to see how this thing's drive. It's gonna be a lot lighter than the Patrol, um, but those poor Land Cruiser diffs, the transfer case, I'm gonna have to do some driveline upgrades. I can see myself doing a lot of gearboxes in this and hopefully I can get some chrome alley axles. I'm surprised it didn't actually spin the axle on the dyno because it's only held on by those uh, five or six little studs on the end of the rear axle, so. It's a win today, nothing uh, broke, nothing too dramatic, and um, going home with the car that runs. All right, so we're gonna leave it there. I think it's, for me, it's way past my expectations. I wanted five to 600, we've cracked the 600, 638 I think we got. Um, we're at the limitation of the fuel. One of the knock sensors isn't giving us really accurate reading, so we're gonna call it there. He's like, oh, we could squeeze a bit more out of it, wind the boost up, but I just wanna leave it, actually drive it before we go, you know, throw a leg out of the bed or something. So we need to keep this in together, get it on the road, and then we can come back maybe and do a bit more tuning, play with that water methanol, and see how we look from there. But stellar job, dude. You, you, um, he was impressed with me actually, because well, I built a motor was, that didn't was, piss oil everywhere. I don't, I don't have to fix anything. Yeah, it's good. So, cool. like with a fresh engine, sometimes you have things that just aren't done up properly or it leaks oil or water or something doesn't work, but all we had is one fuse that blew and um probably the wrong heat range plugs and probably too much gap. yeah the plugs which i do That's recall now i was meant to get those cooler ones but they're out of stock so pretty got common. that sorted but yeah i'm stoked too first motor i'd built on my own and it's held together well so we'll see how many years i get out of it could be a few weeks could be a few years who knows Hopefully but um let's get this thing back to the shop we've got a ton more work to you can tell some bits are missing 
I don't know, I might need a guard or two to get this thing on the road. They say the definition of subscribe is to arrange to receive something, typically a publication, regularly by paying in advance. Please arrange to receive something, typically a publication, regularly by paying in advance by clicking the button below.